Welcome to Conversation With. This is the BCAT program where we go in depth with one guest and really kind of pick their brain about lots of stuff that they're thinking about. My guest today is Councilman Cecil McConnell. Cecil has been on council. He was elected in 1995, so he began his service to the city of Bremerton in 1996. And his term has ended at the end of uh, December. And thank you so much for, number one, sitting with me today, because <laughs> it took just a little bit of persuasion for Cecil to say yes. I kept bugging him, and he goes, I don't have anything to say. And I'm like, after well. 16 years, you don't have anything to say? <laughs> so in brainstorming our show today, Cecil and I have lots of topics that we're going to talk about. Yeah. But um, Cecil, you were elected in 19... 95 actually November 1995 who was the council person prior to you in district 2 district 2 is yours correct yes, yes. who was prior to you Maury Dawkins Maury Dawkins yeah. and then cuz Maury had been mayor and then he went on to council uh, yes he was the first mayor under this form of government right you know, right he served for 3 years there and then he went on to council mhm mm yeah. By and the way, he he uh, was the guy that sold me my house. Yeah, Maury he had he had all <laughs> kinds of businesses, did he? Yeah. He, he had was, Evergreen Trophy. Yeah. He was a real estate person. He was yeah. a politician. He served on our Parks and Rec yeah. committee. So he was yeah he was a busy guy. He had all kinds of stuff. So Cecil served as um, council president in 2006 and 2009. And it was during that time in 2009 that <laughs> Carrie Bozeman said, I'm done, I'm going to go to the port. Yeah. So you served as mayor. Mayor you, pro tem, yes. Mayor pro tem. You and Roger. Roger, yeah. If it hadn't been for Roger, I don't know what I would have done, though. Because, <laughs> uh, the well, mayor. You, go ahead. The mayor told me one day, I uh, want a meeting with you tomorrow morning. Didn't tell me why. I'll come in in the morning, next morning. And the two attorneys were sitting there, I sat down, and the mayor, and I sat down there and I says, what's up? He says, I'm resigning. <laughs> and you went, oh, poo. <laughs> now had, what? They had already figured out the succession. This is okay. Being that I was president of the council, I could become mayor pro tem, you know, until the next mayor was elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but so Roger, that, uh, Roger actually done you know, he ran the, the city. majority of the yeah, work, he did you know, the because he was here. Yeah, he was all, there every day. All right? day, every right. day. So Bose left in, Bozeman left in June, I believe. Yes. And then the election primary the, and then the final election. Once the final the, um, general soon election as it was, was certified. As soon as it was certified. Patty came in. I got alone. released. You got released <laughs> on good behavior. Um, Cecil has served um, on the audit committee, mm -hmm. and he um, is on the Gold Mountain Board of Directors. Yeah, I was on the uh, Finance Committee and the uh, Public Works Committee also. Those are your, I think you like audit and Gold Mountain probably, those are your two favorites. Yeah, and I've served on them almost from the time I got on the council. I've been on those two committees. So, Mayor, I mean, excuse me, I called you, I just called you Mayor, and you're not. <laughs> Cecil, you spent 20 years in the Navy, yeah. 11 years in the shipyard, so mm -hmm. 31 years of federal service, government service. Mm -hmm. What interested you about City Council? Did somebody come to you and say, hey, you'd be good? No, or? no, uh, I got involved in city politics, uh, I don't know, eight, nine years before I, did, I ran for council. Uh, and I served on a lot of the committees, uh, uh, three charter change committees, the errors and emissions uh, committee for the zoning ordinance, and I started a initiative drive for uh, city manager, in which the council made me the chair of it. What year was that? Do you remember? No, I, I don't Cause remember. Because that would have been a charter change. Yeah, oh, that was a change of government. Total change of right. Exactly. You got to go from a mayor form to uh, to a city manager, but at that time I felt that the city needed professional manager instead of you know like council and the mayor are like popularity more or less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I felt that the city needed professional management. 
-hmm. But uh, there was 15 people on the committee. Two of us wanted to keep the current district. 13 wanted to go citywide, and that shot it down. Mm -hmm. The people out there did not want to go citywide with their councilmen. Oh, where councils elected at yeah. citywide, you're not in a district. Yeah, because they were per afraid se. of so many. At that time, mm -hmm. the business community was pretty uh, involved, and a lot of them were concerned that the business group would get all of the uh, council people from right. their areas. Right, you know. right, right. So, yeah. so when Cecil came into office um, mid 90s, hmm. issues that the city was dealing with was fluoride, fluoride in the fine. water, or not fluoride in the wa yeah. in our water, and also our wastewater treatment yeah. plant. Those that are the was, two big issues. Those that were we the had. big biggies, biggies. Yeah. The wastewater treatment plant. Tell us a little bit about what a, how what happened there. Well, when the plant was originally built, they were supposed to go in 50-50 with. Uh, Port Orchard and get 90% funding from the federal government. Bremerton kept holding it off and holding it off and holding it off and finally Port Orchard said we're going to go by ourselves. So Bremerton funding dropped to 50%. So to accommodate that, they eliminated the odor control portion. Ooh. Which was not a smart thing to do. But not a smart thing to do. So then the neighbors... Eventually it cost us a terrible amount of money. Right. You know, right. Millions and millions. Millions, right. Yeah. Right. And, then. and the fluoride topic, it was citizens that wanted, no, they didn't no. want fluoride. No, no, fluoride was terrible. The council enacted the ordinance, it passed it, putting fluoride in the water, and the citizens got up a referendum against it, mm -hmm. and it passed. Yeah. Right. And to this day, we do not have fluoride in our water. We do not have fluoride. So if your children are growing up in Bremerton and your pediatrician knows, then your children take little fluoride tablets. Yeah, it, yeah. Either way. Um, the little known fact about Cecil McConnell is he owned an archery shop and he made bows, as in the, the bow and arrow. Recurves and long bows. Long I made bows. one compound for one my grandson. <laughs> That's a beautiful art. That's yeah. a, a woodworking skill. Cecil yeah. is also a wood carver and a painter. Yeah. And those are all kinds of things that he's going to try to get back to when he finally, finally, finally retires. Yeah. It, uh, I got a call from an old friend the other day. It says, as soon as I get off to council, we're going down to Spencer Lake, Mason County, or yeah, I believe it's Mason County, go fishing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to get to do a lot of things you didn't do. So, Cecil, what's one thing about you is you definitely study. Nobody, well, I think it's you and Roger Lubovich, he's our city attorney. The two of you know that charter, our mm -hmm. city charter, in and out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really a feather in your cap. But has another councilman expressed that interest that they need to? Not really. As far as I know, mm -hmm. that, of course, I we'll don't know to. everything they do. Right. But the way I looked at it, our, our BMCs and the charter and some RCWs, they keep you out of trouble if you know them. You know, you, you know what your limits are. And if you don't know your limits, you can get into trouble. Amen. And also, you miss opportunities where you could have done something that you thought maybe you shouldn't have, couldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you'd have read the book, yeah. You, you could have. Right. And I think we should always, you know, whether you're serving on a board of directors for a nonprofit, um, working in the city, always go to policy, bylaws, and the charter is like a city's bylaws. Yeah. Your charter and your Bremerton, the BMC, Cecil well, talked yeah. about, Bremerton Municipal Code. Yeah. Those are, that's, that's how the business is run. Yeah. So if there's a question, go to that. That's, that's our, our guide. It is our, our city. guide. And Cecil has studied it and mm -hmm. has rewritten it. Like he... Yeah, quite a bit of the, of the charter. Uh, before I got on council, I don't remember where the two or three charter change committees I served on. But then uh, Andy Paripa and I 
made a whole mess of changes to it at one time, and, and they were passed by the people. And then they decided to streamline it, Roger Libovich, the city attorney and I, so we got together and we put in, I don't know, 11, 12 changes to it. Uh, we eliminated the requirement to meet on TV once a week to once a month so that we mm -hmm. have some, you know, pliability uh, with it. And this worked out great because before we didn't have a lot of time for study sessions. This way we alternated uh, on camera to study sessions every other week and it, it worked out great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Also, we eliminated the double reading of the ordinances when they were passed. Oh. Used to. Used to have to read them twice. Used to have to read them twice. And another thing we eliminated was any council member or public could call for a, a verbatim reading of the ordinances. And you know, as you know, some of our ordinances are quite thick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we took that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> willing to give them a synopsis of it. <laughs> right. Um, Cecil, what are your feelings about the upcoming change? And I know it won't be till 2013 or 14, where yeah. there's going to be redistricting. What's your uh, feelings on well, that? Well, I think the people are going to lose 20, 22% of their representation. They're not going to be able to get as familiar with their representative as they can now, because of smaller districts and fewer, uh, more council members. That. And also, one of my fears was uh, only four people can really get control of everything. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and uh, four votes is easy to get. The fifth one was a hard one to get to get the fifth vote on a on a nine member council. Mm -hmm. But on a seven member, you don't need the fifth one. You, you, you get the four. four. Right. You know, it. Uh, but, mm. but maybe it'll work out. I mm -hmm. hope it does because yeah. right. I hate I hate seeing anything adverse happen to the to the city. Right, right. And what is the timeline on that? Is is it change in fourteen or thirteen? Uh, let's see. The election twenty thirteen is the election, so twenty fourteen will be when Sweet. it goes into effect. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And that was something that has been brought up to council a few times, hasn't it? The change yeah. in number yeah. of council yeah. seats. Mm -hmm. So it did finally pass. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, Cecil and I are going to come back and talk a little bit about what he thinks are the best things that's happened in, in his tenure and some disappointments as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Conversation With, and my guest today is Councilman Cecil McConnell. Cecil is ending his tenure of 16 years on our Bremerton City Council. We've talked a lot about um, his knowledge of the charter, and he's uh, served in the Navy and worked in the shipyard and has served on the Board of Directors of Gold Mountain. Cecil, let's talk about the building we're sitting in. We are in the council chambers in the Norm Dix Government yeah. Center. And um, this building is about eight years old, I think. About that, yeah. Um, so there was quite a conversation while we lived in our old building. And um, what were your feelings about this coming into this uh, condo association and building yeah, this facility. I, I was opposed to it. In fact, I wanted the city to, to purchase the Wamu building and make that into a city hall, which would have blended right in with the government center. It made kind of a complex mm, on mm -hmm. that. But, uh, and I didn't like city hall being winding up on the sixth floor. I felt if it's going to have it in here, it should be on the first floor so that the people wouldn't have to come in and go up and down elevators, you know, and stuff to get to, to the city hall mm -hmm. to conduct their business. Hmm. But uh, that but happened. Here to, we are. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that's an interesting concept, the WAMU building. It would have been interesting. Yeah, it was, it was for sale at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot cheaper than what it originally, I finally did sell for. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I bet. The, 
Um, Cecil, what's the biggest disappointment for um, projects that were that the city was working on that maybe didn't come to fruition, or what's your biggest disappointment? Boardwalk. The boardwalk. Boardwalk that, from downtown around to Evergreen Park. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would have been a, a, a tourist attraction, and I think the people of Bremerton would really enjoy walking that because of the view they would have walking from here to Evergreen or back, mm -hmm. either direction on it. Right, right. Yeah. Plus, it was a combined project to um, at, redo well, the at sewer, the beginning, and the sewer lines uh, were all going to be underneath there. Yeah, and, but uh, the tribe objected to that, so we agreed to put the uh, sewer line on, law, on upland, mm -hmm. you know, on, on shore. But that wasn't enough to convince the tribe to not object to the project. Right, so that yeah. kind of... Hmm. And your biggest success, I think we talked about it a little bit. What's the biggest success, you think, uh, for you personally? The charter, I think. Uh, streamlining it, speeding up the processes that we have on that. It, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, That's a lot of work. That's uh, a lot of brain work. One other thing, too, that I really liked about the council was when the citizens would call with the, with a problem, and 99% of the time I would go to their place and I didn't try to solve it on the phone. I'd go to, to look and see what the problem was so that when I talked to the department heads in the city, I knew what I was talking about. Excellent. You know, so, but, Excellent. And when I was able to accomplish it, you know. I, get, get the citizens help and yeah, get, get you know, the problems it's, uh, resolved. Yeah. Made awesome. me feel good. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, Cecil represents, has represented District 2, which is a lot of the Wheaton Way corridor. Mm -hmm. And what should the council focus on next? That, that's kind of a leading <laughs> question, isn't it? It's well, what, you know, our downtown's revitalized. We have a, we actually, have a new home to live in here. Uh, District 2 needs a lot of work done over there. But the council should really concentrate on the SCIA, South Kitsap Industrial Area, to get businesses in there, get it, uh, infrastructure out there to it, mm -hmm. and so because I think that's that would be the salvation of Bremerton if we could get that SCIA area populated mm -hmm. with businesses and stuff out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Excellent. And plus, then focus on the Wheaton Way corridor. Wheaton Way, District 2, it's, it's totally in District 2 now. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been dead for a long time. And, uh, really, and there is a master plan for that area. There is. Well, we've, we've had developers, you know, we had one who's come in and was going to put in a mixed-use project at the far north end by the Riddell Road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But <clears throat> then the economy went down and he couldn't get the financing. So, and that right now is, is what's holding back a lot of the development from sure. the private companies sure. is been, being able to get financing. Sure. But that whole area of Kmart and the former Albertsons and the former Eagles slash yeah. Lowe's. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, the if other we side of the street is like that too. Uh, the old Correct. Benny's restaurant. It's had several different businesses try in there, but they've all failed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a little bit of a tension there, but it sure would help if the economy started bouncing back a little bit. Yeah, I if the think economy see a little would action. come back. But right now, the economy is not such that people want to start businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I started my archery shop, it, uh, well, I started that with my own money. I didn't need to borrow any on that. You didn't have employees? No. The, the city ordinance wouldn't allow it. <laughs> oh. Except for my family and none of my because family. Because your business was in your home. Right. Yeah, it was a, what they call a cottage industry or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Um, in the 16 years you served on council, who are the council people that you thought were the best to work with, smart, did their homework? Well, the first name that pops into mind is Lon Overson. 
you know, it, uh, I ran into him the other day out at the airport diner. No kidding. Yeah, it, uh, I saw uh, him not long ago. I don't remember <coughs> what it was. Though. Yeah, he was out there with, with uh, his family. Nice. Wife, daughter, son-in-law. Nice. Yeah. So we were out there taking our grandson out there for lunch for his birthday. Uh-huh. But, uh, by the way. And Lon served quite a long time on council, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did. Yeah. As I was going to say, they have excellent fish out there now. <laughs> At the airport diner? At the airport diner. I think diner. they're known for that, aren't they? Here's a plug for the airport diner. Yeah. Fish and chips is like their oh, forte. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we're going to have to go out to lunch there. <laughs> I'll meet you out there. It's not far yeah. from the from Gold Mountain. Yeah. Cecil um, has served on the board of directors for Gold Mountain and he's, he's a pretty avid golfer after mm -hmm. um, learning to play. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got some a little hip challenge that you're gonna yeah, take yeah, care of. It, uh, I know, I've been needing a hip replacement for about what, five, six months now. But I didn't want to get it while I was still on the council because I didn't want to Push one of those little walker things around up here. Hard enough for you to use that well, cane you've been sporting. Yeah, there's no, I, I haven't, you know, you I, haven't I, been using it? I uh, suffer. I, I have it in my car in case it gets too bad. I go down and get it, but. Uh, uh, so you're going to take care of some medical stuff after you retire, get mm -hmm. that hip so you can get back on that golf course. Yeah. Is it just one hip or do you have two no, bad hips? No, just the hip. Just one? Just my left one. Your left hip? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Cecil's a painter and a wood carver, so maybe he's going to get back to that a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, in fact, I went out yesterday and I got a shock buying painting equipment. From the last time I bought some, I was paying eight to twelve dollars a tube of paint. Now they want twenty to thirty dollars a tube. <laughs> wow. Well, that's sticker shock, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and this was after I just sold three of my paintings, you know, so I, I didn't make, you know, allowances. Did you make enough to I didn't make allowances in there for the cost of living. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he's going to get into the wood carving again and maybe do some bows I, or not? If I do any wood carving, it'll be life-size objects instead of the miniatures. Miniatures, you do life-size, wow. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, it takes longer that way. I won't get so many of them in the back pile. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about, so Cecil's originally from Kansas, mm -hmm. and we have both agreed that's a nice place to be from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the Navy took Especially you out Especially right there. now, they're having blizzards back oh, there Oh yeah, right it's now. nasty back there. They've been having some bad, bad weather. Yeah. So obviously the Navy got you out of Kansas. Yeah. If you hadn't chose to live in Puget Sound area, where did you and your wife think you'd ever end up? I know she wanted to stay in California because that's where I retired, Alameda. Oh, at Alameda. Yeah. It, uh, she would have liked to stay there. At but that they were time, closing that all. They were I wasn't did, that getting all closed down? I, it is closed no, down. No, I don't think so. No. no. Oh. It, uh, she would have liked to stay there. Is she a Kansas gal? No, she's from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. That's another nice place to be from. <laughs> well, Wisconsin's nicer than Kansas. They, they have as bad of winters, you know, but they got a lot more trees. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, you know, it's hard to wood carve when you don't have any trees. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of supply. Um, Cecil, you've men mentioned your grandson quite a lot, mm -hmm. and I know he's um, one of your favorite people in the world. Do you just have one grandson? Do you have no, other grandchildren? No, we got two. Two grandsons? Yeah, two grandsons and a granddaughter. And a granddaughter. And four great, let's see, three great granddaughters and one great grandson. Oh, wow. Yeah. How many children do you have? Three. You have two three girls kids. and a boy. And are they all close by? Uh, yeah, one daughter's in uh, South Kitsap. My son is here in Bremerton, and uh, the other daughter, out by the uh, fairgrounds. Nice. So they're all but close they're, by. Well, they're building one out fairgrounds. They're building a house out of Seabeck. Nice. Yeah. Great. Great. 
I just want to thank you, number one, for agreeing to sit down with me and chatting. Oh, it it wasn't that hard, was it? Oh, it took you six years. I know. <laughs> I've been bugging this guy. And then finally he said, all right. All right. <laughs> Cecil, thank you so yeah. much for your time. Oh, you're time. welcome. And it, thank um, you for your service to yeah, the city. It's, you're welcome. You've, I enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah. I know. Well, why else would you stick around for 16 years? Yeah, you, had, you had to like it. Yeah. And you really did some fabulous work. Yeah, it uh, yeah, a lot of things I would have liked got done, but you know, you only have one lifetime, and Amen. sometimes it takes two or three, you know, to get things done. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for joining us on this segment of Conversation With. Again, thanks to Cecil McConnell for joining us, and we'll see you next time.